a mountain range stretching 1,600 kilometers, 20,000 workers operating deep underground, massive tunnel boring machines cutting through some of the hardest rock on earth, and Western engineers saying it couldn't be done. This is the Qinling Mountains in central China, a geological nightmare where faults, underground rivers, and granite harder than steel converge in a perfect storm of engineering challenges. When China announced plans to drill an 18-kilometer tunnel through this barrier in 2001, American experts estimated it would cost $1.7 billion and take at least a decade. China's budget, $560 million, their timeline, six years. The reaction from the international engineering community ranged from skepticism to outright disbelief. But in January 2007, the tunnel opened, on time, under budget. And it became known as Asia's most difficult road tunnel, a project that redefined what's possible in underground construction. This is the story of how China built the impossible why 721 rock bursts couldn't stop them, and what it reveals about the future of infrastructure on a warming planet. The Qinling Mountains divide China like a natural wall. Stretching across the country's midsection, they separate two distinct geographical and climatic zones. To the north lies the Guangzhou Plain, flat, dry, and historically the heartland of ancient Chinese civilization. To the south sits the Hanzhong Basin, humid, fertile, and connected to the Yangtze River system. For centuries, these mountains have been more than a physical barrier. They've shaped culture, language, climate, and development patterns across an entire nation. But for modern China, the Qinling Mountains represent a problem. The northern and southern regions are just 80 kilometers apart by straight-line distance. But traveling between them requires navigating a winding mountain road that snakes along cliff sides and through narrow valleys. The journey takes several hours under good conditions. During bad weather, snow, ice, fog, landslides, it can take much longer or become impassable entirely. As China's economy grew in the 1990s and early 2000s, the bottleneck became critical. Tourism exploded. During peak seasons, the region attracts more than 300 million visitors annually. Commercial traffic surged as supply chains expanded. Every day, tens of thousands of vehicles squeezed onto a road designed to handle maybe 20,000. Overload became the norm. Accidents increased. Economic inefficiency mounted. The old mountain road, built for a different era, couldn't keep pace with modern demands. The solution was obvious build a tunnel. But executing that solution would prove anything but simple. In 2001, China committed $560 million to construct a highway tunnel beneath the Qinling Mountains. The plan called for an 18-kilometer tunnel with a double-bore, four-lane design, two lanes in each direction. Design speed, 80 kilometers per hour. Capacity, over 30,000 vehicles per day. Service life, 100 years. Safety standards, first class, meaning the tunnel would need to withstand earthquakes, floods, fires, and structural failures across a century of use. It was an ambitious plan, but ambition wasn't the problem. The geology was. The Qinling Mountains sit at the boundary between two of China's major tectonic blocks, the North China Craton and the South China Block. Over hundreds of millions of years, these blocks have collided compressed and folded the Earth's crust into a chaotic jumble of faults, fractures, and rock formations. The result is a geological minefield. Underground water flows unpredictably through fractured rock. Stress within the rock mass is three to four times higher than normal, creating conditions ripe for catastrophic rock bursts. And the rock itself, primarily granite and quartz, is among the hardest found anywhere in the world. There was almost no precedent in Asia for building a highway tunnel in such conditions. Realizing the enormity of the challenge, Chinese engineers traveled to the United States to consult with experts who had tackled difficult tunnel projects in the Rockies, the Cascades, and the Appalachians. The American response was sobering. 
Engineers estimated that a tunnel of this length and complexity would require at least $1.7 billion, three times China's budget. Construction time, a minimum of 10 years, possibly longer. And even then, success wasn't guaranteed. The combination of extreme rock hardness, high stress, unpredictable groundwater, and seismic risk made the Qinling project one of the most technically demanding tunnel endeavors ever proposed. For China, these projections were unacceptable. A 10-year timeline would delay economic development, frustrate regional integration, and undermine national infrastructure goals. They needed a faster, cheaper solution, and they needed to figure it out themselves. In March 2001, China mobilized 12,000 workers and began preliminary site investigations. What they found confirmed the worst fears. The tunnel route passed through multiple fault zones where rock is fractured and unstable. Groundwater levels fluctuated wildly. In some areas, thousands of cubic meters of water could burst through the rock face within hours, flooding the construction site in minutes. And the rock itself was harder than anticipated, with granite reaching compressive strengths of 316 megapascals, a level that would shred conventional drilling equipment. Under normal engineering guidelines, you avoid these conditions. You route tunnels around fault zones, away from water-bearing rock, and through softer geological formations. But in the Chinling Mountains, there was nowhere to go. Every potential route encountered similar hazards. If China wanted this tunnel, they would have to build it through the worst geology imaginable. The first major challenge was water. Groundwater in fractured rock doesn't flow predictably like a river. It moves through cracks, fissures, and porous zones, sometimes under enormous pressure. When a tunnel boring machine breaks through into a water-bearing zone, the result can be catastrophic. A sudden inrush that floods work areas, damages equipment, and endangers lives. Chinese engineers convened a series of technical conferences, bringing together tunnel specialists, geologists, hydrologists, and construction managers from across the country. They also invited international consultants with experience in similar conditions. Over several months of intensive study, they developed a multi-layered approach to water management. First, they used advanced geophysical surveys, ground-penetrating radar, seismic imaging, and electromagnetic sensors to map water-bearing zones ahead of the tunnel face. Second, they employed numerical modeling and artificial neural networks to predict where and when water inrushes were most likely. Third, they installed drainage systems and pressure relief wells to intercept groundwater before it could flood the tunnel. And fourth, they maintained emergency protocols, pumps, barriers, and evacuation plans to respond when water broke through despite precautions. It was an imperfect system. Water inrushes still occurred, but by anticipating and managing them, Chinese engineers kept the project moving forward. The second major challenge was rock bursts. When rock is under extreme stress, compressed by the weight of mountains above and tectonic forces from below, it stores enormous energy. When a tunnel is excavated, that stress is suddenly released. In mild cases, the rock cracks or spalls. In severe cases, it explodes. A rock burst is violent, instantaneous, and unpredictable. Slabs of rock weighing several tons can be ejected from the tunnel wall at high velocity, smashing equipment and injuring or killing workers. During the Chinling Tunnel Project, engineers documented 721 rock bursts, accounting for 77% of the tunnel's total length. In other words, for most of the construction, workers were operating in a zone where the rock could literally explode around them at any moment. To protect workers, Chinese engineers implemented extraordinary safety measures. Workers wore bulletproof vests and helmets, not as a symbolic gesture, but because the flying rock fragments had velocities comparable to bullets. In high-risk sections, engineers erected bridge-shaped steel frame structures along the tunnel walls, creating a protective cage that could catch falling or ejected rock before it reached workers. Temporary nets woven from high-strength nylon and steel wire were deployed to intercept debris. But protection alone wasn't enough. 
engineers needed to reduce the frequency and severity of rock bursts. To do that, they developed a new type of rock reinforcement called negative Poisson's ratio anchor rods. Traditional anchor rods are rigid. They hold rock in place, but do little to absorb energy. Negative Poisson's ratio materials, by contrast, expand laterally when stretched. This property allows the anchors to absorb shock and distribute stress more evenly, reducing the likelihood of catastrophic failure. The technology worked. While rock bursts continued throughout construction, their severity decreased, and no worker fatalities were attributed to them. The third major challenge was the rock itself. The Chinling granite is extraordinarily hard. 316 megapascals of compressive strength, among the highest encountered in tunnel construction anywhere in the world. Worse, the granite is composed of up to 96% quartz, a mineral so hard it can scratch steel. Traditional tunnel boring machines use rotating disc cutters to chip away at rock. Against normal rock, this works reasonably well. Against Chinling granite, it was a disaster. Cutting efficiency dropped by more than 50%. Cutter heads wore out rapidly. On average, a complete set of cutting tools would be destroyed for every 100 meters of advance. Each cutter disc cost between $5,000 and $8,000, and frequent replacements added millions to the project's budget. China's solution was to develop a new type of tunnel boring machine specifically designed for ultra-hard rock. The machine, nicknamed the Lion, combined two rock-breaking mechanisms. The first was a traditional roller cutter, refined and reinforced to handle higher stress. The second was a high-pressure water jet system that uses streams of water at pressures exceeding 200 megapascals to cut and fracture rock. The dual system worked synergistically. The water jets created microfractures and weakened the rock, making it easier for the roller cutters to break through. The result was a 30 to 40 percent reduction in cutting resistance and a 25 percent reduction in cutter wear. The Lion still required maintenance, but it could advance through granite at rates that would have been impossible with conventional equipment. But even with these innovations, one final challenge remained. Air quality. An 18-kilometer tunnel is essentially a tube with limited ventilation. When thousands of vehicles pass through daily, they generate enormous quantities of exhaust, carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxides, particulate matter. In an enclosed space, these pollutants accumulate rapidly. Without proper ventilation, the tunnel would become a death trap, with toxic gas concentrations rising to lethal levels within hours. Traditional tunnel ventilation uses fans at the entrance and exit to push or pull air through the tunnel. But for an 18-kilometer tunnel passing under a mountain range, that approach just wouldn't work. The distance was too great and the airflow resistance was simply too high. Engineers needed a different solution. What they came up with was unprecedented vertical ventilation shafts drilled from the mountain summit down to the tunnel. In 2005, China mobilized another 8,000 workers to drill three massive shafts through solid rock, connecting the tunnel to the surface high above. The deepest shaft reached 661 meters, taller than the Shanghai Tower, one of the world's tallest buildings. At the top of each shaft, engineers installed powerful air exchange systems. These systems operate continuously, extracting exhaust from the tunnel and pushing fresh air in. The result is a constant circulation that keeps air quality inside the tunnel comparable to the outside atmosphere, regardless of traffic volume. The ventilation system was expensive, complex, and required drilling through the same treacherous geology as the tunnel itself. But it worked. Today, drivers passing through the Chinling Tunnel breathe air as clean as they would on an open highway. In January 2007, the Chinling Highway Tunnel officially opened. Total construction time, six years, exactly as planned. Total cost, under budget. The tunnel stretches 18 kilometers beneath one of China's most formidable mountain ranges, carrying over 30,000 vehicles daily. Travel time between the northern and southern regions dropped from more than two hours to less than 30 minutes, a 90% improvement in efficiency. Western engineers who had predicted failure were forced to reassess.
The Qinling Tunnel demonstrated that Chinese infrastructure capabilities had reached a level few outsiders had anticipated. The project became a case study in engineering schools worldwide, analyzed for its innovative approaches to water management, rock burst control, hard rock excavation, and ventilation. But China didn't stop there. Building on the techniques developed at Qinling, Chinese engineers moved to even more ambitious projects. In 2009, they began construction of the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge, which includes a 5.6 kilometer undersea tunnel, one of the longest immersed tube tunnels in the world. The tunnel consists of 33 massive prefabricated sections, each larger than an aircraft carrier. These sections were built on land, floated into position, and then lowered into a trench dredged from the seabed. The engineering tolerances were extraordinary. Sections weighing tens of thousands of tons had to be aligned with millimeter precision, underwater, in a busy shipping channel. The tunnel was designed to last 120 years, withstand magnitude 9 earthquakes, survive category 16 typhoons, and endure impacts from ships weighing up to 300,000 tons. The total steel used in the project equaled 60 Eiffel Towers, and once again, China completed it on schedule. What these projects reveal is more than technical capability. They demonstrate a national commitment to infrastructure that few countries can match. In the United States and Europe, major infrastructure projects often face decades of delays due to funding disputes, environmental reviews, legal challenges, and political gridlock. In China, the government can mobilize resources, coordinate across agencies, and sustain momentum over years or even decades. This doesn't mean Chinese projects are perfect. Environmental concerns are sometimes sidelined. Worker safety, while improving, hasn't always met international standards. And the financial costs, though often lower than Western equivalents, are still enormous and sometimes burden local governments with debt but the results are undeniable. China now operates the world's largest high-speed rail network, the most extensive highway system, and some of the longest bridges and tunnels ever constructed. Chinese companies export this expertise globally, building railways in Africa, ports in Europe, and highways in South America. The Qinling Tunnel, in many ways, was a turning point. It proved that China could tackle challenges the rest of the world considered insurmountable. It showed that with enough determination, innovation, and investment, even the hardest mountains could be conquered. And in an era where infrastructure increasingly defines economic competitiveness, that lesson matters. Because the mountains we face today, climate change, resource scarcity, urbanization, are no less daunting than the Qinling Range. And if a tunnel can be built through solid granite, perhaps other impossible things become possible too.